Hello, and welcome to Tea with the Goddess. This is our second official on-air gathering. We are not yet live, still have not worked out the um, streaming versus uploading. Um, honestly, I've been doing a lot of other fun things, so I forgot to check out my equipment. But here we are today. Um, it is not actually tea for me. I have one of my concoctions. It is the Swiss Miss hot chocolate caramel flavor plus a um, French roast organic tea um, by Ticino. I think that's how it's pronounced or Ticino. It's very good. It tastes like coffee as an underbase um, for sweet things. So I love it. And then a Hello Kitty tea drop that I found. Um, so I like to throw things together and mix them up. And then a, a chocolate cake. So we're very um, sweet again <laughs> today. Um, so, and our topic today is going to be again, doing it for me, doing it for me part two. Um, so pull up a chair, grab a cuppa, um, invite your friends as we take this moment to open this space up to the Divine Feminine. So take a deep breath in. And let everything go. And inhale, following the breath in and down the back of the throat. And exhale, releasing all the little dust motes that are hiding around in there. And inhale, feel it go deeper deeper into your heart center and exhale, feel the cares and the worries and the stress just kind of drop away, flow down and inhale. Feel the expansion to the fingers and the toes. And exhale, bringing your attention to this time and this place. We are officially after the full moon today. The full moon today was around three in the afternoon um, Pacific time. So I'd hoped to do the ritual during that. But as so many people have posted on Facebook, uh, today was a bit of an emotional roller coaster. Um, and uh, they're saying it's partially because of the moon. So um, I was not gathered enough to uh, do any sort of a connection with others at that time which is all right, because I am doing this for me. And in that vein, I would like to welcome um, the goddess, the divine feminine into this space um, to just hang out with us, to bring us some of that awareness and um, connection that you know, Gavin with our friends can bring. It is January, the earth is asleep, um, finally resting after all the festivities of last month. So in a way, the energy of the Divine Feminine is a little subdued, a little more subtle right now. But the moon is high in the sky and always looking down at us. And I think that is part of the awesomeness of 
believing what we feel. There is the cycle of the earth, and that is one form of the divine feminine, but there is also the cycle of the moon as another form, and her waxing and waning is different than the earth's waxing and waning. And there's the cycle of the sun, the divine masculine for me, and that cycle is a different cycle of waxing and waning. And uh, there is the... Um, to me, the trees are a bit more masculine, um, but that's, you know, relegating things and giving them, organizing and putting them in these things, um, in their niches and in boxes in a way, which, you know, technically is not a happiness thing to do. People are niche free um, and energy is niche free, but everything flows everything flows in different circles and different ways and there is always this is the point thank you there's always access to the energy that we need to connect with at the moment um so here we are and welcome yes um part of the reason that today is part two of doing it for me is because I reaped the results of uh, doing things for me today. Um, and it was pretty cool. <laughs> um, at least it felt that way to me. November is always a tough month um, because we're anticipating uh, the cold of the winter and the sun is going down and the times have changed and it's... Uh, just tends to be a difficult month for a lot of people. So in November, I do my best to um, post a happiness thing every day because it helps me focus on gratitude, on happiness, on things to look forward to because I am not immune to the November doldrums. Um, and today in my emotional uh, journey, I went back to Facebook to check and see if anybody had connected with something I posted and went back to my page and went through all the things I had posted. Um, all the beautiful moments, all the humorous moments, all the little sayings, and it made me feel better. It brought some happiness into my moments. Um, and so for no other reason, I am grateful that I did that because it helped me today, which really brought home the do it for me thing. I am putting this out there, not only to do something creative and to, um, you know, spread the joy, but also because it feels good to me and I might need it in the future. Um, and another, it having been an emotional day, it was a close call if I was actually going to uh, um, do a formal sit down, a formal informal. Um, but I really wanted to do this. I knew that if I didn't, um, yeah it would be easy to not do it the next time and not do it the next time. So um, uh, doing it for me has brought many good things. And I am very, very grateful for all the energies that keep expanding into these creations. For the me's of them that say, keep doing it, so that the means of now can enjoy, can enjoy it. So part two then of the doing it part as opposed to the reaping it part um, is the stumbling block of continuity. Um, if you're like me, it is easy to get gung-ho about things and say, okay, yes, 
I'm gonna do this. I want my morning routine to be this. I want my evening routine to be this. I want to have these good habits. I know that doing these things, following this nutrition plan, following this exercise plan, following this cleaning plan, following the schedule will pay off in the future. It will bring me to an emotional, physical, spiritual place that I like to be. Um, so start of a project, uh, uh, here is Crebo joining us today. Um, start of the project, it is easy to sit down and create the schedule and daydream all the things that can come of it and how awesome it will be. And, um, you know, create the world as it were. And then we get to the actual practice. And as we talked about last time, you know, putting it out there in the world is one of the first steps. So setting the schedule is a positive step and getting up and doing it, positive step. But, hey, things on paper are not the same as things in real life. And B, it takes a lot of energy to change our patterns because uh, our patterns are natural now. They are something we have been doing for a while. They're something we don't actually have to think about. There was a CSI many years back um, where they show a person getting out of bed, putting on their slippers, putting on their robe, going to pour the coffee, and then they go back and show his face and part of the head has been removed from the rest of it. It was bashed in, I think. And the thing they were trying to express is that the body is used to moving in a certain way. It can do a lot of things without the actual conscious direction which is fabulous if you're driving to work for the 400th time and your brain is off doing something else, or if you're washing the dishes and your brain is off doing something else, but it is not so fabulous when you are trying to change that ritual. If you want to actually um, make tea instead of coffee, or if you want to put on a, a different set of slippers or um, if you want to get up on the other side of the bed. Our habits kick in before our conscious brain a lot of time. So actually being able to do it can be a challenge. And there is, it is easy to get frustrated with it saying i want to do all these things i know i will feel better if i do all these things but it didn't work today and i'm at the end of my day and there's all these things i haven't done and i don't really like how that felt and i this and i that and it's easy to say that was a lot of work and i don't want to do it again and i don't feel like i can do it again for me, the, there are two things to practice and one thing to remember. <laughs> the two things to practice are, one, just do little bits. Um, five minutes of something means that you have done it for five minutes. You can say, I have done this for today, instead of, uh, just uh, blowing it off. And yes, you know, five minutes of exercise, that doesn't really do anything. Maybe not, but it gets it into your brain, into my brain, as part of the ritual. It gets it as part of the focus. It starts inserting it into the thought process. Um, the... The second thing is to 
know ahead of time that it's going to take longer than I think. It is just going to take longer than I think. Five minutes of exercise is not actually five minutes of exercise. There's putting it on your shoes and setting up the exercise area and deciding which exercises to do, unless you've done it the day before, but that's still an additional time to actually doing the five minutes of exercise. So there's knowing that things are going to take longer and it is not all gonna get done. And therefore there's patience, having patience. But doing a little bit every day is helpful to get it in to the brain. Okay. So I lost that train of thought, so we're going to move on to the one thing I would like to say. There's a song in Into the Woods, the musical, that's how do I know what I want till I get what I want and I see if I like it, which is absolutely true. There's no possible way. The corollary to that is how do I know how I do until I do it and I see if it works? Um, no offense to Yoda, but there is a heck of a lot more try than there is do. We try different things. We try different ways of doing things. We adjust. We try different flavors. We try different pens. We try different poses. We try a whole bunch of stuff. And until we have tried it in a specific fashion, we don't know if we can do it that way. Now, he may have meant the focus is on what you are doing. Um, I am focusing on uh, lifting this chapstick. Okay, that was easy. I got it, I reached out, I grabbed it. The focus was bringing the chapstick to me as opposed to, well, I'll try. I know I have to approach it and do I really think I can do the chapstick? The focus being, yes, the chapstick is coming to me, um, doing it for me. But the bottom line is sometimes I can sabotage my attempts at something because I'm trying it in a way that is foreign to me. I don't know yet what works for me. So when setting up a routine for the day, um, bringing in all the amazing things I would like to do in a day, I have to remember, A, they're not all gonna fit anymore <laughs> unless I can go through the whole day in five minute increments. B, that doing just a little is better than not doing it at all. And uh, see, I have to figure out how it works for me. And so to that end, what does work for me, because it does take me a while to settle into something, to change the way I've done something, is to not do everything actually all at once, despite what I just said of doing five minutes of each because then I feel like I'm uh, standing back and saying, I've got to do this. It's an obligation. And the little rebel says, oh, well, no. Um, instead, I am setting goals. I am holding this space in my mind. There we are. Thank you. It is not even as definitive as setting goals. It is holding the space in my mind. I know in the morning that I need to be at a specific place by a specific time. So I have all this space before that specific time to do the things that I like to do in order to start the day my way which includes connecting. Sometimes I jump out of bed and say, yay, here we go. 
And sometimes, like this morning, I lay in bed and think, it is not happening. So, I know that I am not going to get everything done this morning. But that space in my head to start is morning routine space. I am thinking of it as morning routine space. And in the evening, there is a space of time that I think of as evening routine space. Even if I'm not doing the evening routine, it is still evening routine space. And I have progressed to the point where I am doing, even if it is just five minutes, a couple things on both sides that fit into what I want done. I always connect in the morning, even if it is just a quick five minute prayer. Um, I always do that. And I always take a couple minutes in the evening to do a tapping exercise. I prefer the long ones. I prefer my long connection. But if it is hitting bedtime or get up time, then I do the short one. And I know I have still done a little bit. And I know that this is not something I did a couple months ago. A couple months ago, it was, this is what I really want to do. And I'm out of time. This is what I really want to do. And I'm out of time. So I figured out how it worked for me, both a long version and a short version so I could go to bed saying, I have done this. And now I am ready for the next step, which is adding at least five minutes of writing in the morning and at least five minutes of breathing in the evening of just putting everything media related down <laughs> and just staring out the window. And I know that since I have cycled through the ups and downs with those first steps that I can now cycle through these, adding these second steps. It will take some time. I know this is how I do it. It takes time. I go back and forth. I ebb and flow, just like the moon, just like the earth, just like the sun. And eventually it falls into my routine. So I'd like to take us a few minutes um, to pause and hear from our divine guest. And just settle in and take a sip of tea because that's what we're here to chat with. And um, think a minute about something that we would like to bring in something that we'd like to do for me, something that we can say, when this is manifested, this is how I will feel about it. I will feel good, I will feel vibrant, I will feel slender, I will feel intelligent, I will feel wealthy, whatever. Just a feeling that I would like to achieve. And uh, let's see what the goddess has to say about advice or connections or just a thought of how to connect with that, how to achieve that, how to look back having done that and say, look, I did that for me and here is the amazing result. So this we're just going to sit and breathe a little and see what we hear. Maybe take a sip, maybe take a bite, maybe pet your cat and see what we hear.
Yours may still be talking. <laughs> but it was interesting to me what I heard. A was we have to let there be a space, let there be a silence so that we can hear what the divine is trying to say. Um, and again and continually, slow down. For me, the information I got, the conversation we continue to have is I need to slow down and not rush from thing to thing, from food to food, from book to book, or even from work to work, but to let there be a pause in between each, a savoring of each focus. A friend of mine, um, he used to talk about conscious beginnings and endings. And I say used to because it's been a while since I've connected with her. It is very easy to consciously begin something. Yes, we are working on this. Okay, this is what we need to do now. But it can be a lot more easy to forget to consciously end something because when we're done, we've already switched to the next thing. So stopping, savoring, listening, and honoring each activity with a beginning and an end. and patience with ourselves, which was the other thing at the beginning I was supposed to remember. Things happen. We can set schedules. We can um, plan our day. We can set things up ahead of time and they will often flow smoothly but there are other energies in the world that we allow to influence us, like the weather, like the emotional full moon, like friends, um, like stepping our toe on something. They can change the course, the feeling, even the possibilities of the day. And having patience with ourselves allows us to savor that moment for what it is, to make a change in the schedule without feeling like we need to be punished or like we've done something wrong. One of the most interesting things about working from home is the change in the guilt factor. It is easier to say, I'm not going into work today because of the weather, because I still have the option to work without doing something that freaks me out. One of the blessings of uh, having had the virus two years ago or whenever was that I could not do the work even from home and the world did not end. Um, I still had my job when I was finished, when I was well, ready to go back. And it was a 
much different lesson. It was, there are things that are going to happen and that will put our schedule out of whack. And if I'm doing it for me, then it's okay to stop and to not do things if they're painful or if they hurt. It is okay to forgive myself if I am unable to do this or that or meet that obligation. It is okay to take a rest. It is okay to search forward and uh, put all my energy into it because I'm really caught up in enjoying it and I want it done and other things slip to the wayside. It is how I am doing it and that as I do things for me, as I try different ways, as I accept myself in all my different aspects, as I have patience with me, it actually becomes easier to do things, easier to make that schedule, um, easier to try and change because I am not trying to fit the trapezoid into the hexagon. Well, actually, I don't know if I used that word correctly. It's been a while since I've done geometry. But it's much more fun to flow like a river than to march in a straight one. And it works better for me. All right, I hope that made sense. I am very grateful for your presence um, and for your presence. And I am very grateful for your presence. I am really, really grateful that I did this today. It has brought me back to my heart center, to a place of calm, to a place where I am all of me and not just those emotional balls or the events that um, triggered them. And so before we go, um, just a quick Hagalaz is the rune. And uh, since it came out upside down, back, well, backwards basically, face down, for my reading purposes, that makes it reversed. Um, technically, Hagalaz isn't a shape that can be reversed, but Hagalaz in general means storms. Um, so, reversed would indicate a time of calm, a time when there's going to be some peace and there might be actual weather storms out there, but they won't feel as emotionally charged, as frantic, as frenetic, as difficult as they felt um, well, at least if you're like me, on the op last year, um, last year's storms just felt weighted with, um, I don't know, fate, portent. Um, uh, and, you know, the weather systems causing it, physical things and mental things. And, oh, yeah, the turn of the year is lovely. And we get a calm. So allow yourself, let us allow ourselves to rest in that calm, to know that we are being held. Sometimes it is tempting to use the calm as a vacation and to not follow the schedule, to not try and make changes, but the calm is actually the best time to practice 
all those things that we need during a tempest to hone the skills that we discovered we had during the last storm to appreciate the things that are still standing now that the storm is over. So patience with ourselves, savoring things, and now that the storm is over, giving it its honor and due before we turn forward to the new year. Really acknowledging the emotional storm of this morning um, and what it meant and if I would change some of my behaviors or if I wouldn't and the things I'm grateful for for it one of the things I'm grateful for is that I actually had the space and the freedom to cry long and loud and I'm a loud crier and it's not pretty, <laughs> um, but I had the space to do it and I let myself do it instead of trying to suffocate it. And I am really grateful for that. So an ending, acknowledging and honoring patience and putting things into play. Yes, I like to cram as much as possible into each and everything that I can. Am I forgetting anything? No, say good night, Gracie. All right, good night, Gracie. <laughs> Thank you again for joining us, and I hope you have a fabulous day.